my presentation was about presenting the carrier viewpoint from a, a little bit more independent than a guy who's with a carrier, because I can actually talk to some issues that uh, a lot of the carriers have to avoid because they, there's a, there's you got to be careful what you say when you're working for somebody. So as being an independent contractor like I am, I'm able to address uh, issues that I know a lot about due to my past, but uh, in a way that's uh, a little easier for the shipping public to understand sometimes. Our exports going to take off in mid-2018 like a rocket. Uh, at least I hope so. It's going to start mostly in the Gulf because the what's happened is along with the shale operation that, that we all hear about and the, and the fracking of, of oil, uh, they've created a lot of natural gas. And that natural gas becomes a, a basically a free source of of product to make resin, uh, both PVC and polypropylene. And what the uh, manufacturers have done, your major, your major producers, is they've started to build new factories in the Gulf area. So you have huge facilities going in from all the major producers. Uh, and those facilities will take resin shipments from about 350,000 20 foot equivalents a year, a 20 footer being a 20 foot container, uh, up to a million uh, in a very short period of time over, over a six to nine month period. They're a little sl slow in getting going because they've had trouble getting enough workers. But those plants will start to come on at the end of this year and by middle 18, a lot of the, the rush will start happening. Uh, and the, the actual supply of ocean going space particularly to Asia out of the Gulf, is somewhat limited. And uh, that will cause uh, kind of a gold rush uh, of, of volume to export, and they'll start looking for alternatives. There's a lot of questions international buyers should have before they, uh, they sign on the dotted line in the contracts. It's, it's, it should be more of a collaboration than it's probably been for the last few years uh, because of I don't know whether to say politics or, or a lack of rationale in the industry. We've overbuilt ships, we've overbuilt supply of, of containers, overbuilt supply of space, uh, have, have probably a 25% bubble in additional space than we actually need to handle the world's cargo. Uh, because we had such a good, good number of years five years ago, and when you order ships, you order them out four or five years in advance. Uh, only to find out four or five years from now that you don't need the space. Uh, but you've spent the billions of dollars on the equipment, so what do we do now? Well, you get into a market share frenzy. Uh, and then you, if you've paid attention to the shipping industry in the last few years, if you were to take that and you were to take a book on the airline industry and substitute shipping company names for all the airlines that have gone bankrupt or merged, it would, it would read just like what's happening in the shipping industry. And now they're consolidating, they're cutting back. We had 12 major carriers last year. We're down to seven global carriers right now. And then there's four medium-sized carriers and then a bunch of little guys in the world. Uh, so seven carriers are gonna carry most, 90% of the world cargo is gonna be carried by seven major carriers. Uh, hopefully they'll start to understand the, the, the financial ramifications of that and start to turn back toward profitability, uh, which they haven't been at for over six years now. One thing, I, firstly, I, I thir why, did, why do I come to these events? Because they're, they're exciting, they're vibrant. I meet such wonderful people throughout the world that are shipping in the industry. Uh, that, that spurs me to keep doing this when I should technically be retired. But at the same time, uh, I did this for 42 years, and I, I've, I've got, I mean, I still think at night all, in terms of shipping, and I'm thinking, why don't they do this, and why, why don't we do that? So I like to get out and talk to people and, and have information, and, I, and I, I don't have the tunnel vision that you do if you're working for one carrier for, or, or just in one segment of the industry. I get across all, all scopes and all disciplines now. So I, I understand where the equipment is and isn't. I understand uh, where the ships are calling, what the restrictions are and the limitations in the Gulf, uh, what the impact of larger ships on the East Coast would be, what's the impact on the West Coast of the larger ships on the East Coast. And that kind of knowledge and information seems to 
draw people to ask me to do things. So, you know, and at times I get paid for it. So it's not a bad thing to do. Uh, it's just, I've, I've still got all this activity in my brain about it. And, you know, I, I don't want to back off yet. So I, I get out and I talk to people and, and get invited to talk at, at events such as this one. And uh, it, it's enjoyable and, and I learn stuff. And at the same time, I, I share information that I hope helps people uh, do their jobs better. This is a little more intense in regards that almost everybody here is, is, a, is a, major sh a major shipper. This, you know, I, I go to other events that are a little more specific, uh, like a resin event. Okay, it's got the big chemical companies. Uh, but there may be, be, you know, 15, 20 major shippers there and everybody else is a vendor trying to talk to those 15, 20, 30 major shippers. There's hundreds of shippers here. There's farmers that are growing the product. It's really interesting to talk to the farmers about what they still do, how they still work the earth, how they rotate the crops, uh, how they're working with new seeds and all this information that, that creates this, this economy that pushes all this product out to the world to help feed the world. Uh, and if you, you know, as you read the stories about the world population, we're going to need to be able to use every inch of, of farmland we have and be able to move that product somewhere around the world. And, uh, and that's what the shipping industry is all about, is finding new ways to do things, better ways to do things, upgrade our ports, upgrade our infrastructures so that we can handle what the farmers produce. We don't want it sitting in the field. We don't want it wasting away uh, uh, in silos. So we've got to get it out of the country. North America is really the most difficult place to do shipments from. Uh, and everybody says, okay, why is North America the most difficult place to do shipments from? Because we're 1,500 miles by 3,000 miles. Everything we do is, is, is a combination of rail and truck. And, and you, you're not growing the soy a trucking distance away from ports like 90% of the rest of the world does. You have to move it by rail. You have to move it by, uh, by bulk truck into containers and the containers that are only there because we have imports try and move it back out under, under reasonable rates with the carriers. And, and that scope of service and the number of ports, we have 26 major ports in North America. Most countries like, you know, you go to Holland, you got one port, you got Rotterdam, go to Belgium, you got one port, you go to Germany, you got two ports. And even in China, I mean, almost all the shipments out of Shanghai are trucked into Shanghai uh, from factories. In most cases, this is not raw, not agricultural products. All the Southern ports are all serviced by truck. So we, we have such a broad scope because of our agricultural uh, situation that it, it's quite more complicated to get the equipment in the right place at the right time at the right prices and be able to move the product back out of country. And that's, that's been one of the biggest challenges I had when I was running, uh, helping to run OCL, was trying to find ways to save costs, to get the equipment in the right place so that you could offer a reasonable rate to the agricultural shippers to get the product out of country and to have the right infrastructure on rail and on dock delivery to a terminal and get it on a ship. It, it, it doesn't just happen. It, it takes an awful lot of work and an awful lot of hours and a lot of people. I actually am a little fearful. I, I actually think there's some real challenges coming because the distribution of the empty equipment that we have now is based on the fact that we have malls and we have stores and we, we have distribution centers that are focused on population centers that at least get the equipment into the interior and then can, on the backhaul, you can get to the agricultural areas. Uh, with some of the technology changes and some of the, the cutback in malls and the changing in distribution centers, I'm actually a little worried how challenged this could be. We could end up having maybe to move more rail to the coast and transload agri that way. That can be viable, but it also can be more expensive. Now, of course, the, the domestic rails would love that, but the, uh, there could be some real challenges because of the change in the retail and you would think, what does retail have to do with agriculture? But if we change the way we do our retail, we could change the, the access to equipment, and there could be some significant changes to the way we do. We have to ship agricultural products uh, down the road, and we can't put pipes in and pump it. We're going to have to. We're going to have to move it on ra on rail cars, I would think. But I. That's just something that's that is striking me as I read more and more about you know, the Amazon and the changes in, in Walmart online and, and 
the closing of a lot of malls potentially down the road, particularly in the Midwest. So uh, I, think, I think we have some challenges for infrastructure coming. Um, I don't have the answers yet because I'm not sure what those challenges will be, but it's going to be, there's going to be some interesting things to figure out in the next 10 years. And I think relationships were everything because people, people make things happen. And, and uh, I can tell you that by coming to events like this, I have, I have developed friendships and relationships. I hate to tell you, I, there's so many people that I forget their names and they're walking up to me, Ed, how you doing? And I've probably seen them four times in 20 years, but they remember me and I have to, you know, luckily we have these nice little tags I can reach down and pick a name out. Uh, but it's just, it's just fun, it's fun to be here. It's fun to learn from these guys. It's fun to give them information that helps them do their work better. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like going to a circus. It's fun, it's like being a kid again. These, these things are, are entertaining and, and a good time. Uh, and you should come away from something like this with a lot of benefits for your company, a lot of benefits uh, in the way you do your business and, and learning a lot. So yeah, I think these are great. I think we actually should have more of them. Uh, but it's not that easy to get everybody in one place at one time. And there's six, 700 people here, 350 are from overseas. That's quite a, that's bringing a lot of people together.